Hey guys, it's Chris at Highland Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned the honor and privilege of your subscription. And of course, to everybody who's watching, if you enjoy or get anything out of this video, I would really appreciate it if you would click that thumbs up button. It's a great way to show support without having to spend any money. And if you'd like to help support the channel financially, you can visit my eGuitar Plans web store or my Highline Guitars YouTube merch store. And there you can purchase t-shirts and plans for building guitars as well as the tools that we use to build guitars. And any purchase that you make is going to help support this channel so that I can keep making videos where I'm building guitars as well as reviewing the tools and the products that we use to make our guitars. So what I'm going to be talking about in today's video is I'm going to actually start making this six-string multi-scale fan fret guitar. Um, what I'll be doing specifically is I'm going to be making the fretboard. So at the beginning of the video, I'm going to kind of talk about some of the files that I used um, or that I've set up that I'll be using to carve the fretboard on my CNC machine. Then we'll head out to the shop and I'll start actually doing uh, the carving operations. Now, as I'm doing the carving operations, I'm not going to do a lot of narration of, of what I'm doing. I've talked about this stuff many times in the past in other videos. And if you go to my channel, you can search for uh, other guitar building projects that I've done and, and find out the kind of bits I use and the feeds and speeds and all that sort of thing. But if you're watching this video and you have a question, uh, don't hesitate to post it down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to try to answer it. At any rate, once I have completed this uh, fretboard, at the very end of the video, I'll show you what the fretboard looks like. But then I'm also going to explain a couple of things, or at least one thing, that I would do differently the next time. So be sure to hang out for that. And uh, in the meantime, let's go ahead, jump on the computer, and then we'll head out into the workshop and start carving this fretboard. Before I do any cutting operations on the CNC machine, I want to double check the files that I've created that I'm going to be carving. And I, re I have to do this because I actually set up this project in Easel Pro a couple of weeks ago and I did it over several days. And because of the complexity of setting up tool paths, I want to make sure that I've done them all correctly. I don't want to make a mistake which would result in having to start over with a new fretboard blank. And the same is true with the neck and the body. But today we're only concerned with the fretboard. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the paths that I have uh, established in Easel Pro. And really all I can do here is look to see what the depth of cut is going to be. It's 0.125 inches, which is a little bit more than three millimeters. And that's how deep I'm going to cut these slots. It's a little bit deeper than it needs to be, but I always glue in my frets. So the glue will actually fill any gap that occurs between the tang of the fret and the fretboard itself. So 0.125 is exactly what I want here. Uh, I should also check my cut settings and all of those look good. That's, that's what I need. Okay, so next I can move on to the next carving operation, which is gonna be to cut the marker dots. And when I drill these marker dots, First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, and this is after I've cut the slots, is I'm going to lay down a, a strip of painter's tape over the fretboard. Then I'll drill the marker dots, and I'm going to drill those to a depth of 0.125 inches, just like the fret slots, roughly three millimeters. Then once that operation is done, I'm going to leave that, that masking tape on there because I'm going to fill the holes with glow-in-the-dark powder, and then I'm going to saturate it with CA glue and that'll fix the powder into place and I will probably apply the glue so that it's actually slightly proud of the surface because then the next thing I'll do is after that glue is dried is I'm going to cut the um, radius of the fretboard and remember this is going to be a conical radius fretboard it'll be 16 inches at the heel 10 inches at the nut so I'll do a quick um, rough pass here to carve away the edges of the wood. Then I'm going to do a finishing pass which goes back and forth across the, the width of the wood all the way along its length. And I can double check this in mesh cam. This is the file that's set up in my cam program. 
and I have two carving operations that you see on the left side of the page a rough operation and these are the specifics for that roughing operation I'm using a quarter inch diameter roughly six millimeter ball nose bit for this it's a two flute spiral up cut ball nose bit and then I will follow that up using the same bit so I don't have to make a tool change but this is going to be the finishing pass and like I said it's going to go back and forth across the width of the fretboard and the step over which is the distance the bit moves from the prior cut will be six percent so that's pretty small number I could go smaller if I wanted to but six percent is pretty small um, and that's this this is a perfect step over to get a really smooth surface without taking an extra uh, amount of time to conduct the carve so uh, I should get the radius cut and finished pretty quickly and I'll have a nice smooth surface that's going to barely need any sanding once it's complete so I'm pretty confident I have that operation set up correctly and then the final one for the fretboard is the perimeter shape and this will cut the actual shape of the fretboard out now what I have to check here first of all I need to make sure that it's going to be going all the way through the wood which it is 0.25 inches which is how thick the blank is I've got my tabs set up and you can see those if you look closely you'll see these little yellow um, hash marks on this drawing and that is where the tabs are and that just keeps the blank secured or keeps the fretboard secured to the blank so that once the bit cuts all the way through the blank the fretboard won't go flying around uh, kicked out by the the spindle and that could damage the spindle it could also hit the operator and cause injury so we want those tabs uh, but what I have to make sure is that the cutting path is on the outside of the fretboard shape if it's on the uh, if it's actually on the path then because I'm using an eighth inch diameter bit what would happen is the fretboard would end up a sixteenth of an inch smaller all the way around if I cut inside the path it's going to be an eighth of an inch smaller all the way around and I've actually done this before so whenever I'm going to cut a fretboard um, and, and true this is true with all the cutting operations that I'm going to do I want to double check to make sure I have the path set up correctly uh, I don't want the uh, the mistake of laying the fretboard onto the neck only to discover that it's too small all the way around to actually fit on the neck <laughs> so um, that appears to be correct uh, my cut settings are all what they need to be for this particular carving operation so as far as the fretboard is concerned we're ready to head out to the shop to start cutting on the CNC machine
Okay guys, I have finished making the fretboard. So the next step will be to make the neck, then I'll glue the fretboard to the neck, at which point I'll probably set it aside for a week or so, let it kind of settle after all the CNC work and the gluing and all that. But then once that's done, I'll come back, I'll lightly sand 
the surface of the fretboard and then I can press in the frets. And the neck is essentially completed at that point. Uh, I'd still have to do a little bit of finish sanding and then apply uh, my uh, finish of choice to the neck, which will probably be a polymerized tongue oil. But then um, I can go on to making the body and continuing with the build. Um, one thing that I would do differently if I was going to make this fretboard again, um, when I made this fretboard, I cut the slots first, as you saw in the video, then I put down masking tape, drilled the holes for the marker dots, and then put the powder and the glue into the holes. Uh, unfortunately, however, CA glue has a tendency to flow. And wherever the marker dots are really close to the fret slots, like they are here at the end of the fretboard, that glue will flow into the slots. And that's what happened. So what I ended up having to do was I ended up having to run my fret slotting program twice. Um, the first time took 30 minutes, the second time took 30 minutes. So in total, it took me an hour to cut the fret slots. If I was to do this differently, what I would do is I would first drill the holes for the marker dots and fill them with the powder, the glow-in-the-dark powder, and the CA glue. Let that dry. Then I would cut the fret slots. Then I would cut the radius, and then I would cut out the perimeter. But um, yeah, I made a mistake by cutting the slots first. Uh, another option would have been to, instead of using CA glue, I could have mixed up the powder and then added it to uh, epoxy and then just put drops of the epoxy with the powder into those holes. Epoxy doesn't flow the way CA glue does, so I don't think I would have had an issue with it um, flowing into those slots, but um, I was in a hurry to get it, uh, the fretboard finished, so I used CA glue instead since it uh, cures almost instantly. So uh, you live and learn. Um, but overall, I'm pretty happy with the way the fretboard turned out. So I am ready to proceed on with the next step, and that's to make the next. So I hope that you will join me for uh, that episode when it comes up here in a, few, in a week or so. And in the meantime, as always, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back for uh, future episodes in this uh, exciting guitar building project.